Ever feel like you want a Whopper, but don't feel like actually leaving your house and heading over to Burger King? Well then, have I got excellent and oddly appropriate news for you. Burger King has partnered up with Uber Eats, and this is the spot that's going to make that announcement to the world. In today's exciting flame broiled episode, I'll show you how I tackle a fun little action-packed chase scene. Spoiler alert, I ripped off other movies. Plus, this time around, I even get to play with some cute little miniatures. Sound like something you'd like to see? Well then, pull on up to that drive through window and have it your way. Okay, so there are two components to today's wacky little campaign. The first part is just going to be door cam footage of the creepy looking king mascot delivering food to some unsuspecting lazy people. That segment is going to be shot in documentary style, i.e. without the need for storyboards. So we're going to go ahead and ignore that. What we will be focusing on is the 30 second commercial called Delivery in the Fast Lane. It opens with the king sitting on his Uber Eats scooter, just twiddling his thumbs, when suddenly, a call comes in. He fires up the scooter and shoots over to the local Burger King, where he grabs the order from the takeout window. He then races back across town to deliver the Whopper to the eager and slightly lazy customer. And that's just about the size of it. Throughout the spot, we'll sprinkle in a few gags here and there, and hopefully end up with a fun and quirky little gem at the end. Okay, so I received all the materials for this job one day in advance, and because I had simultaneously booked myself on two other jobs for the same day, I began to panic a little bit. So in an effort to minimize the amount of drawing I'd have to do the following day, you know, just lighten the load a bit, I decided to get a jump on things the evening before. Knowing that the king was obviously going to be featured heavily, I spent some time the night before the job was to begin, just downloading as many different shots of him as I could find, and then proceeded to draw him up in advance. I figured that doing this would save me some time the following morning, because then I'd be able to just copy and paste the king into the boards as needed. Brilliant! This ended up biting me in the ass a bit when I learned the following morning that the king would be wearing this goofy motorcycle helmet in pretty much all of the shots. Ah well, I maintained it was still a good idea, and truth be told, I can still use a lot of what I drew up. I'm just gonna have to add that helmet to his majesty as I go along. I woke up at 4 a.m. the following morning in order to get a jump on the day's craziness, and after going through my morning routine, I found this email waiting for me. It's from the producer of the job, and she's provided me with a link to the location photos, which are right this way. I've already gone ahead and downloaded these, but I'll click on through just to give you an idea of what you can expect on a similar job. Okay, so this super confusing document that you're looking at right here, this is the director's shop. This is the same director who I worked with earlier on a Pace of Salsa commercial. If you've seen that video, then you may already be familiar with his methodology. He essentially pulls screen grabs from other films or from location scouts, and then puts them together in a PDF for me to draw from. It appears at first glance to just be like this random uh, mishmash of images. And believe me, when I first open this document, it, it takes me five or 10 minutes to sort of wrap my head around it because it's a bit chaotic for sure but we'll take it shot by shot and we'll find our way to the end. Essentially, each one of these images is a shot that he would like to see represented. I don't get it. Okay, if you watched any of my previous videos, you already know how this party plays out. I'm gonna start grabbing these photos right off of the shot list and just drop them down to my storyboard template. We'll be starting with a close-up of the king texting somebody and then cut wide to see that he's sitting on a bike. This next page has a series of images which is supposed to represent a series of quick cuts, beginning with the ignition switch and ending with the rear tire peeling out. Now, a few months back, I worked on a Grubhub spot and was wise enough to save all of the bike messenger elements into a stock sheet labeled Bikes. I'm opening that now because I can remember already having drawn that hand on the throttle shot. And hey, no point in reinventing the wheel, right? Okay, so I trust you get the vibe here, yes? Well, I get it. It's very clever. I'm just copying each of the photos in his shot list, pasting them down into my template, and then placing them in the correct order so they make sense story-wise. Now, here's where the fun begins. Back in 2015, there was a Melissa McCarthy movie called Spy. I brought that scene up on YouTube and found that there are a couple of interesting shots here that I think I can use. So I went ahead and pulled some screen grabs from that, and now I'm just going to go ahead and drop them into my storyboard template. 
All right, that is it. Everything now is asked for me, plus a little bit more. But before I wrap up the stage, there are just a few more shots I think I might want to throw in. First, looking back at my bike stock page, I do kind of like this shot here with the foot jutting out. It's a bit dynamic, and I think it'll work nicely with this spot. Then I'll go ahead and grab this complementary shot here, and I'll make that into an A and a B frame, so it's all just one continuous shot pushing in. Now, I'll eventually have to change this foreground tire into a car, so it makes more sense with our story. Now, I'm also kind of digging this shot here, so I'll flip it and drop it in, and eventually I'll add a big flowing cape behind it. Now, maybe I'll use it, maybe I won't, but hey, it's already drawn, right? Might as well see if it works. Okay, so let's kill this document and move right along to the next fun part. My local supermarket sells these little die-cast toy cars for about 10 bucks each. Every once in a while when I'm picking up groceries, I'll grab one or two. They come in handy if I need to visualize something like a car chase scene, or if I'm feeling lazy and I don't want to have to draw up an entire parking lot full of cars, I'll simply position them how I want, snap off a few shots with my camera, and then get to work tracing. A few months back, I happened to pick up this Vespa. It's pretty much been sitting in my desk drawer ever since. Not a whole lot of uses for a Vespa, really. Except for today. Today he comes out of the desk and takes the center stage. I'm going to search around with my camera and see if I can find a few interesting inserts that I can just sprinkle in throughout the spot. Finally, with all of the preamble out of the way, I'm ready to put the pen to screen and actually start drawing. Alright, now that we put all that heavy lifting in the rearview mirror, I feel like this might be a good place to end part one of this episode. To those of you that are relatively new to this industry, I get that a lot of what we did here today may seem like a colossal waste of time. I mean, we're two hours in this gig rig, I haven't drawn a single frame. But I assure you, a little bit of time invested at the front end of this project will pay huge dividends at the back end. Now that we've got our king mascot drawn up in advance, the director's shot list broken down and accounted for, additional angles of the scooter worked out, thanks to our handy dandy little miniature, plus a few action shots that we humbly borrowed from a major motion picture sprinkled in, the rest of this job should be smooth sailing. You don't believe me? Well, then stay tuned for part two of today's episode, where we'll put pen to screen and actually begin to draw something. If you have any questions about what I did here today, or if you just want to tell me how much you hate me, drop on down to the comment section below and hit me up, Buttercup. And as always, if you found this video insightful or entertaining and would like to see more of them in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. Till next time, this is Vinny Delay with Ink and Grow Rich.